If you've ever struggled to come up with a really good effective prompt to use inside of ChatGPT, for example, I'm gonna show you a tool that basically takes care of prompting for you. You no longer have to figure out how to prompt things correctly. It basically takes one sentence and gives you a really complete prompt that you could then use inside of any app like ChatGPT or Google Gemini. And this whole concept is called prompt engineering. And I've seen people charge anywhere from $100 to $500 just to create a single prompt like this. But now you could use this tool to create as many as you want. And if you don't want to do this yourself and it seems a little bit too technical for you, I've also created a list that went through this treatment and that's available for a free download on my website. But let me show you how this works. So the company Anthropic, they make Claude, which is a ChatGPT competitor. They have this place where it's really designed for developers, but we're just going to use it as non-developers. You could access it at console.anthropic.com and it's going to bring you to this page. You do have to sign in or create an Anthropic account for free to get to this page. And then once you're here, right over here, it says generate a prompt. This is an experimental prompt generator that could turn a description into a high quality prompt. So all we have to do is type in a basic prompt and it turns it into a high quality prompt. So the way this works is you need to set up an API key or sometimes they have a little coupon for $5 that shows up over here that you could use. But if it doesn't show up and you don't have any credit, you do have to set up an API and spend a couple of dollars here to actually be able to generate a prompt. It takes just a few cents to generate one, but I've generated a bunch of them and I think I've spent like four or five dollars here. So let me just cancel out of this page and let's go to the API key section. And then I've deleted all mine just to show you when you don't have any, you have to create one. So just go ahead and press create a key. And then this is gonna create a key. So name your key over here. I'm gonna call this Claude terminal and then go ahead and copy that key don't share that key with anyone because then they could use your information here but then go to plans and billing and add a credit card if it didn't give you the free coupon because you do have to spend a little bit of money a few cents typically less than a few cents typically to just generate one of these prompts and then if you go back to the dashboard let's go to generate a prompt i'll show you here as an example so they give us just five to start with so it says write me an email that responds to a customer complaint and offer a solution. I'm not gonna give it any context because I wanna show you exactly how it's gonna format it for us. So let's go ahead and generate this prompt over here. Okay, here's the prompt, it took a few seconds and look at the size of this prompt and the level of details to this prompt and it's fully editable. But let me go ahead and press right here, start editing. I wanna show you kind of the formatting and the way it kind of uh, lays it out for us. So these red sections typically are where you would type in your own information. So it needs to know what the customer said because I'm responding to a customer complaint email. So you just copy and paste that over here. So again, type in the full body of the email and let's say this was all about the product information. So type in your product information, but right there, that's all I had to type out in my prompt. So this is the user prompt. This is what you would put inside a Claude or ChatGPT to get a response. And again, look at the level of details that I have. Each one has a little section here. Again, I could fully edit every piece of it, but it's far better than the single prompt, the single sentence prompt, two sentence prompt. So all you have to do is press run over here to get a reply. You don't have to do this. This is just kind of letting you test it out here so you could refine it within this playground. And here is the reply that we're gonna get if you use Claude. If you wanna use ChatGPT, you could also use this right here. I'm gonna take the user prompt. I could open up ChatGPT and I could go ahead and paste that prompt here right into the prompt box. And this is the version that ChatGPT is gonna give us. So it created a subject line for us and it's giving us a resolution here, a step-by-step -step resolution and everything we need here is included. Now you could also press this option right here if you wanna change the different models that they have available. So you could use Opus. Since I'm paying through the API, I don't even have to have a paid subscription to Claude because I'm paying for every time I use it, I pay a penny or more. And then I could use these different three different models that they have. I wouldn't use anything before that, but these three models here are gonna give you different results based on what you're using. Opus is the best one, so that's what I had selected as mine. Typically, that's gonna give you the best output over here. And if you're more advanced, basically you could get the code from here too. So you could get the perfect prompt and then right over here, copy and paste the code if you're building an AI app, which I'm building right now. And if I was to use this version of Claude, 
Well, I have the code right here after I got exactly what I'm looking for. Now, in some cases, when you get these brackets here for these variables, this is asking you for specific information that you need to fill out. So sometimes if you're using this platform, instead of filling this out, you could actually use this variable option right here. So it says set variable. So if you just type something in, so I'll type in the name of my business here. And when I do that, you see it turned green instead of red. So it actually has a variable and it pulls it in. So whatever you type in here, this would be the audience's answer. It would have to be the answers to these two or five questions that I send them. I will put that here. So then when I run it with those variables here, I actually didn't have me type in or paste any amount of information here. I just used the variables, but this only takes place inside of this platform. So if you're using ChatGPT or Gemini, you do have to just replace these variables. You have to remove the brackets too and just typing your own information or paste your own information every time you see a variable in these prompts. My prompt book also is set up like this. So you could use it in here. So you will have to in those prompts too because I use this platform, remove these brackets and just type in your own and skip the variables altogether. Now they also have an entire prompt library over here that I've made a different video about. So here, depending on what you're doing, they have business prompts, personal prompts, and with each one of these, you could actually click and then you could see the user prompt over here. And these are usually pretty comprehensive type of prompts. So if I just take this prompt and I just go back to generate another prompt, let me just type this one in. And this is pretty comprehensive, but look at how much better it gets when I generate the prompt using this prompt generator. Okay, here's the new prompt. And as I read through these, this is not longer just for the sake of being long. It's longer because it's really defining all the different aspects that you need out of the response. So if you don't want any section, you can delete it, but typically it's just gonna really fine tune the answer for you when you give a prompts that look like this. Typically I've seen these mega prompts that are like pages long and those don't work very well. Usually in the middle of those prompts, something gets dropped. So this makes a prompt that is usually in a good length, but it's also very detailed. It's not just a simple paragraph, it's broken up into sections. And then when I press start editing, the reason why I think this is a really good layout is again, I have to type in the report here or paste a report. But when I run it, I could then come back to the left side and then change some of these things. So go through each paragraph like, well, it did this here. I need to change that. Or I don't want this kind of tag. I want it to be tagged a different way. And I could really, really fine tune my prompt. And typically when I get a really good prompt, usually I do the same set of tasks every day. I save those prompts into my prompt library and then I have it. I don't have to go generate new prompts really ever again for this task if I get it exactly the way I want. And also ChatGPT and OpenAI, they also have a prompt library too. So this is under platform.openai.com and they have a prompt library. I'll link this below. I've made a different video covering this too with a bunch of different things you could download from that. But if I take one of these prompts, let's just take one of these prompts in the generate category. We'll take this interview question. So it says, create a list of eight questions when I'm interviewing a science fiction author. So that's the user prompt. That's all ChatGPT is giving us. Let's go back to this option, generate a prompt. I'll type that in and let's take a look at the level of details where a single prompt like this is not gonna give us something very usable, right? Even if we give it more context, it's not really gonna have the parts, the output, the way we probably want. And let me go ahead and press start editing now that it's finished. And here's a much more useful prompt here. Now, I purposely didn't give it the author description, which should have been the context of the original one sentence prompt. I should have added that. But it actually figured out, hey, it needs this right here. So here, I just took something from Wikipedia. I'll just paste that over here. So here's the author description. And then first brainstorm potential interview questions, then review the brainstorm question and select the eight most interesting and engaging questions, then output the list into this type of format. You can have different tags, so it's inside of different tags. This comes specially useful if you're ever building any type of AI app to format things correctly. I'm gonna press run here. Now here's the response. And sometimes when you use a single sentence or a double sentence prompt, you may get an answer that looks like this, but if you actually start reading the words, you'll realize it's not at all what you're looking for because you didn't really give it enough context like this prompt generator is giving us. So what I would do is every time I take this user prompt, I go through it line by line, 
make sure it is exactly what I'm looking for because this is taking some amount of guessing to what you want. So you do have to still refine it a little bit, but once you're happy with it, just copy and paste it somewhere, save it. And then you have this prompt for every time this task comes up, you don't have to come back to Claudic again if you're just using ChatGPT or another AI tool. And you have a prompt that's gonna work across all of them. So hopefully this completely elevates your prompt engineering skills. And I have that list on my website of the top useful AI prompts that I use across different categories like writing and marketing. So if you want that, I used exactly this tool. I took some of my existing prompts and I ran it through this new tool and I kind of flushed out that list. So that should be useful too. And you could get that from the link below as well. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.